Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video, we're gonna look at this APL NV009 night vision binocular from the company Apexel. Now Apexel is a brand whose products I've taken a look at in the past. I've specifically looked at some like camera adapters for my cell phone that basically turn your cell phone camera into microscopes telephoto lenses, things like that. And in today's video, we are going to take a look at this night vision binocular pair. Now, in reality, when it comes to night vision, this is a genre of product I've tested quite a bit. The only way to figure out whether or not they're any good, to be honest with you, is to get out use them and figure it out just by looking at reviews just by looking at you know the product and people's documentation and on their websites you really can't tell it is one of those things that the user's experience can kind of make or break how you feel about the product the quality in your hands and the other thing and just to consider sometimes the recorded footage is only that just recorded footage it really does come down to the user's experience so what we're going to do we're going to get these out into the field both in the daytime and at night i'm going to go through all the features with you then what we'll do is i'll come back to the studio I'm going to give you my final thoughts and we'll figure out whether or not I think these are a reasonable option for you. And so with that said, I have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to get into, do me a favor, stay tuned. Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Apexel who did provide these for review.
So as the sun goes down, this is a fantastic place to observe wildlife, especially right now, it's just a great time. You're actually already missing just incredible birds, huge like cranes and really, really cool. The beaver out here get very active, so I figure it's a good opportunity to leverage this Apexel night vision binocular. Now at this point, we're gonna get it fired up and we'll see how it goes. The first thing is the overall user's interface is very easy. I set up the back menu in a matter of minutes, very easy to navigate through, so that's great. This particular unit does not have optical zoom, but it does have digital zoom, so we'll be leveraging that here tonight. In manual focus, of course, so that is something to consider. Now, I do have this set for the 4K mode, which should record approximately 25 frames per second. I do edit my videos to 1080 for the particular format at about 30 frames per second, so this should work out pretty well for me. As we get things recording here, we're gonna check the audio. So we're gonna have both the audio from the camera, but also the binocular itself. So now as I start to pan around, now this is at zero times zoom. So again, zero times zoom. We're gonna get this kind of set out here. Start looking at the water. You can already start to see the current. So I'm not looking terribly far out. I'd say maybe 150 feet. There's a little sort of birdhouse out there. Now I'm gonna lock the tripod into place here and just play with the focus for a minute. So again, as you see, out of focus, out of focus, bringing it back in. That is about as sharp as it can get. And again, this is zero times zoom. So I'm just gonna survey the area real quick, look around, see if there's anything worth noting that you can hear off in the distance. There's a wedding going on at a facility that I know is downriver. Actually, I guess technically it's upriver. Um, but yeah, good little tunes tonight, which is kind of funny. Now going the opposite direction here. You can see that's a dam, so like a beaver dam. They've been building that out for a while. It's probably technically a lodge. I'm gonna check the focus here. That looks pretty good. Again, surveying around up into the trees. Now this does have like a stabilizer mode, so I'm kind of trying to run this in the image stabilizing mode. Generally speaking, this does seem fairly stable, not too bad. Maybe just a little bit choppy, but again, not too bad. And as we survey around, here you can see all these trees. This is usually where we start to see some of the activity. So up around in this area. If there was something over there, I'm pretty sure I'd see it. And so all in all, for the very first clip, not too bad. Now at this point, I'm gonna change location, see if we can get a view further down where I think there might be a little more activity. So again now, changing locations. I am now hitting record. And so we're gonna actually play with the digital zoom a little bit as I press the up button two times, three times, four times, five times, and that is it. Now in terms of the focus, there you go. So you can see there's definitely a lot of digital noise as you take a look at the quality of the picture. Now this is not in the infrared mode, so we're gonna switch modes here. Zooming all the way out, now I'm gonna long press, which now here you can see this is the infrared mode, so that's the IR emitter and that's in mode one. Again, we're just gonna start to dial in the focus. And now it's actually a much clearer picture, but obviously you lose the color. You can see there's a lot of bugs out flying around. Nice reflection off the water. If there was activity over there, we would definitely see it.
zooming into this grassy area there. That's five times zoom. Back out. Again, you can see without the LED and with vast difference. New angle here, hitting record. Again, you can see with the emitter off, trying to bring this into a quality picture here. That's fully zoomed out. Turning on the IR emitter, that's better. Tweaking on the focus there, you can see all the bugs just flying around and even in the water. A good amount of activity out here, just in terms of, you, know, you can see the water moving, a lot of sounds actually, some cars going by, all the bugs, they're like midges, mosquitoes. Zooming way out into the distance. Trying to get it into focus. It is quite grainy. I'm not incredibly happy at the quality of the picture. I think that could be improved. Let's see if we can brighten things up. So this is IR emitter setting one. So hitting record again. At this point you can see it is pretty darn dark. That's IR mode one. I'm struggling to figure out just with simple pressing here. That is IR mode one. Oh, fuck. I keep turning this off by accident. Now one final time pressing record, getting that IR emitter on, zooming into the picture. It's not like super intuitive how to change the IR emitter brightness. And of course you don't have anything to go by uh, in terms of your ability to see out here. I don't know. Without having the instructions here with me, it's not super intuitive how to change the brightness of the IR emitter. So that's a little bit frustrating. That should usually be pretty straightforward, but let's see here. I can change the screen brightness. That's not what I'm going for. It's not really super intuitive. So that is what it is. One last opportunity to pan around. Let's see what we can find. Dialing in that focus off into the distance. Going to five times zoom. And all in all, it is pretty grainy. It's not great. And so now back from my initial nighttime footage, mixed results, not great. And what I realized in each one of these products works a little bit different. They're all basically the same, but there are some things that are just a little bit different. Now, two problems that I had, one, I kept turning the stupid thing off. I find that, you know, when you long press to turn these on, that's fine. Not a problem, but I found that a real quick long press turns it off. And when you're searching around at night to find the buttons and you accidentally lean on the wrong button a little too long, you turn the unit off. That's a little bit tough. And the other thing that I figured out is the way I was trying to access the actual night vision. What I need to do is press the middle button once, and as soon as I do that, I need to start pressing the up button to change the LED intensity. If you wait too long, 
and it kind of times out, well, at that point, it simply becomes zoom. It does not actually change the intensity of the IR emitter. So I was not able to increase the intensity the way I wanted to in my initial field use testing. So what does that mean? It's time to get out there again for some more nighttime testing. And so now as I get back out into the field for the nighttime testing, there are a few things worth considering. First off, I thought this unit was recording my audio, but unfortunately the entire time and including my first sets of video, there was no audio being recorded. So as I come out here again, I'm talking to the unit. I'm trying to narrate and dictate my movements and explain to you what's going on. And none of that was reflected. So I'm going to do my best now that I'm back in the studio. And you can see at this point, I am adjusting the IR emitter intensity as we work through this footage. So I'm not sure exactly what set point I'm on. But as you can see, I am adjusting the IR emitter up and down to reflect the overall brightness in the scene. Now, you'll notice a few things. First off, as I work through the scene, kind of trying to get in and out of different areas. Again, I thought I was able to zoom my footage and zoom into different areas so that when I got into tighter, darker areas and turn up the intensity on the IR emitter, it would show on the screen. I was able to see that in person while I was using the unit out in the field, but that is not reflected in the recorded footage. So you're not able to see that. So some of what I'm trying to do here is really leverage the IR emitter to an efficient brightness to get an optimal picture, to zoom in and out of darker areas, and then increase the intensity as I go. But again, that is not reflected in the actual imagery that you see here on the recorded footage. But generally speaking, now that I did have the ability to increase the overall intensity, that's not too, too bad. Now you can see going from different points in time with the IR emitter off to the basic sort of general nighttime sensor mode and then the actual IR emitter, each one of those set points does have a vast difference and an advantage. And you can see the IR emitter actually doing a fantastic job to illuminate the very dark areas and give me some clarity when I need it. So generally speaking, the IR emitter doing a pretty good job. Now here, another example, we're looking at a bridge abutment made out of stone, which is pretty cool, and just trying to get a general sense. Now this is a very dark area. You can see it's a bridge going over a river. You're picking up on the reflections from the water, looking pretty cool, but again, a very dark area that really does need a good amount of light to illuminate it, and you can see the IR emitter doing a nice job. As I pan around and get into sort of different difficult areas, adjustments are being made with the IR emitter to effectively and efficiently illuminate my scene. Off into the distance even further, you need a little more power, a little more punch, turning the IR emitter up even more. You can see off into the distance. Now again, I can tell you, I remember as I was recording this in certain points, trying to zoom in with the actual unit a little bit further to get you some detail into the scene, but that was not reflected in the recorded footage. So very similar here, you can see I'm, you know, in essence, you know, in person, I was zooming into this scene and trying to get you a little more detail, but at this particular point, it's, you know, the imagery is kind of staying still. But generally speaking, the IR emitter doing a nice job. So overall, mixed results from the APL NV009. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the Apexel APL NV009. Definitely mixed results. Now, as we get into this, let's remind you that there is a definite difference between the user's experience when looking through the device and the recorded footage that you've seen in this video. And for the most part, the experience was fairly the same. Now, we're gonna break this down into the daytime footage and the nighttime footage. When it comes to the daytime footage, eh, okay at best for a few reasons. First off, the actual quality of the experience looking through the device, pretty good. In that particular case, I did have the ability to look around. I had the ability to zoom in and out, no problem. The focus was fairly easy, all things considered, with the thumb wheel underneath and then the buttons pretty easy in terms of your ability to zoom in zoom out not too big of a deal there was a little bit in the way of i guess what i would say 
artifacts, the image may be a little ghosty in certain times, a little contrasty at times. And then there was even some points, even though this has like an anti-shake in it, there were some times when it kind of wandered around a little bit and seemed to skip just a tiny bit. And then when it comes to the recorded footage, pretty much the exact same thing, only unfortunately, even one step further away. The recorded footage, not really as crisp as I would like. On top of all of that, the inability to actually capture your zoom movement. So while I was looking through the device, I was zooming in and out, but the recorded footage didn't reflect any of it. And then on top of all of that, what I thought was a microphone, this little hole right here, that's not a microphone, that's what they call an indicator. And I think it's literally just a little bump so that in the nighttime, if you're feeling around to find the buttons, you can kind of feel that. It's not recording audio. I can't figure out how to get this to record audio. I don't think it does. And that's problematic for a few reasons. First off, as a content creator, I actually rely on the signature of the audio wave to align my A and B footage. So if I'm recording from this and recording from my primary camera, I'm relying on that audio signature to line that up. So that's kind of problematic right there. Second is, well, you know, if there's nature or things that you want to get the audio, not being able to capture that, I just don't understand in this day and age with a device like this, why you wouldn't want audio. So I can't find a way to turn it on. I got no audio feed in this entire video. And then when it comes to the nighttime footage, Eh, okay at best. So we're gonna talk about the user's experience and then we're also gonna talk about the recorded footage. And again, in both cases, pretty much the same. You heard my audio feed from my primary camera. I, at the nighttime footage, I did record, at least in the first session, I did record my primary camera capturing my audio, which I did plan on aligning with this, but again, it did not record. So from the user's experience, looking through the screen, okay, it did its job, it had the ability to zoom around, it had the ability to focus fairly easy, the IR emitter doing a decent job getting through the different modes. Now that's another thing, the modes was kind of funny where I had to be real quick, press the IR emitter button real fast, and then press up and down to change the emitter intensity. If I didn't work fast enough, the button for the IR emitter would time out, and then the IR intensity would then become the zoom button. So it was a little bit weird. The other thing that I don't like, and I'm going to demonstrate this real quick here on the power button. If I long press here, that's what turns on the unit. So you can see the unit coming on and it took a fair amount of time to lean on that button and get it to turn on. But now a pretty quick long press and the unit is right off. You can see how fast the unit turned off. So at night when you can't see and it's dark and you kind of are working through your menus trying to do what you need to do, if you accidentally press that button just a little bit in a little too long, boom, you just turned off your unit. It's very, very frustrating. So I don't like that about this at all. And then again, similar to the daytime footage with the recording, it suffered from many of the same issues. The inability to record the audio, the inability to, of course, pick up when I was zooming, that was very weird. So I was outside doing my filming, thinking I was getting my audio. I was outside filming, thinking I was getting my zoom movements, and none of that reflected in what you were able to see in this review. So a little bit difficult there on top of that, you know, the user's experience was okay. The imagery was a little bit grainy. It was a little bit tough at times. And that also reflected in the recorded footage. And then beyond all of that, this does not come with an SD card. So you do need to purchase that additionally. Not to mention when you do get your SD card and you have to install it the side compartment here, like, I literally can't get this out. I don't personally have much in the way of fingernails. I bite them all off. It's just my own thing. But this cover sinks in. And when I go to dig it out, it just, it won't go. So I have to, like, look around and find something. And then when I finally find something capable of, like, digging this open, I can then get it open, which does reveal your USB Type-C charging port. And then there you can see you do have the ability to install the SD card. And then beyond 
all of that. It does not come with a case. So you're literally going to just throw this in a bag, throw this in a pocket. You might need to find your own case if you're concerned about damaging the screen or the lenses. So very, very difficult. So unfortunately, the Apexel APL NV009 mixed results. Not great. I'm usually a big fan of Apexel products. They do a fantastic job, but in my opinion, this just needs more work. It's not there yet. I think it could be improved. It does not have optical zoom. It only has digital zoom. That's fine when you're spending a little less for a unit, but not having the audio, that's kind of tough. And just some of the functional oddities that I came across, it just needs to be tweaked in my opinion. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the Apexel APLNV009. Thank you very much to the people at Apexel who did provide this for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor. Take a look at my Outer Limitless 2 channel, which is more on the tactical and firearm side of things. At this point, that channel is growing quickly. I have a ton of videos up there. So if you like what you see here on Outer Limitless, do me a favor and check me out on Outer Limitless 2. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.